Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to check out a 12 bar blues shuffle riff. That's the best name I can come up with this. I'm so surprised that there's not actually a proper name for this stylistic device because it's used all of the time in the blues. It's super, super common. You're going to hear it all the time and there's loads of really funky variations that you can get into as well. I don't mean funky like funk music, but just cool, interesting variations that we're going to explore. I'll give you plenty of food on this coming up. But we've got to start simple and we're going to start learning a straight ahead 12 bar blues shuffle riff in the key of A. Let me play it through for you once, first of all, so you can see what it is that we're going to learn. That's it. Regular 12 bar blues. You can do quick change and you can do slow change, but we're going to start with the standard one. Now, first thing to realize is we're only playing two notes at a time. So for the A chord, first finger is going down on the fourth string, second fret. But the two strings we're going to play are the open fifth string and that note with the first finger on it at the fourth string, okay? So your first thing you want to do is get your pick used to just playing those two notes. Now the underneath of the first finger is lifted up. So actually all of the rest of those are muted as well. So if I strummed all of them, I'm still only getting those the thickest two, except for the thicker string. The thicker string you just want to not pick. It's not going to sound terrible if you do pick it, but much better to try not to if you can. So we're going to play those first two notes twice. One and then third finger is going to go down in the fourth fret on the same string as the first finger and first finger is not going to lift up. Okay, so leave first finger where it is. Then third finger is going to go down on the fourth fret. And you play that twice and then back to the first finger. Then with the third finger. You want to start off, this is straight now, isn't it? I'm not doing any shuffle. One and two and three and four and that would be your first step. Just being able to do that, just picking the right strings, and getting the third finger accurately down on the right fret. Now, as soon as you can do that and you've got the finger motion right and you're picking the right strings, you want to start thinking about incorporating that shuffle rhythm. So basically the and is going to be a little late. So we end up with this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And. Now, my teacher, when I learned this, I was about 12 years old, Pete Thompson, big shout out to Pete Thompson there. He called it the chunka chunka blues. Now, if you say that over and over, chunka 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 dunk, dick, 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 chunka 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 chunka. So it's actually a really good descriptive word for what it is that you're doing. If you just say chunka 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 chunka. You get that feeling of the shuffle, okay? So you don't have to use that. It's not officially called a chunk of chunk of blues if you look it up anywhere or say to your friend, I want to play a chunk of chunk of blues. They might think you're a bit weird. Doesn't matter. You can use it because it'll help you remember to get that rhythm. So if you've got your guitar with you now, let's have a play along together. I'm just going to play it through a few times, nice and slow for you to make sure you get that right feeling. It's really important. If you can, I would recommend counting along. So actually going like one and two. Just because we've got a set number of bars, it'll be kind of helpful if you count along. If you've struggled with that right at the beginning, it doesn't matter too much. You're probably going to find you want to do that at some point. Let's have a play along. Three, four, one.
important that you try and make it feel right. Try and find that shuffle in your being. Hopefully you're listening to some blues. That's a really important part of all of this. If you're not listening to blues, not listening to what it should sound like, you're probably not going to get it right. So make sure you do, you know, get yourself a playlist of some great blues songs and try and absorb that, that feel. Now, in a standard 12 bar blues, we do four bars of A. So if we've got one and two and three and four and, that's one bar. So we play that four times and then we move to a D. Now, to get to a D chord, we move everything down one string. So first finger moves down onto the third string. The notes that we play now will be the middle two strings. There's your D. We do that for two bars and then go back to A. Notice that the first finger can kind of move over while the third finger's down. First finger can kind of sneak over to the fourth string. We do two bars of A again. Then we go down to E for one bar. Now E, first finger is going to go down on the fifth string and you're going to play the thickest string and the fifth string for one bar. Then first finger's got to jump all of the way down to the second fret on the third string and the picking hand has to negotiate from playing the thickest two strings to playing the middle two strings for the D for one bar, then back to A and down to E. Let's play it once through. Here we go from the start. One, two, three, four. Over to D now. One, two, and back to A. Two, three, four. Second bar. Now one bar each, E, the big jump to D, and back to A, and down to E, two, three, four, and you're through. So the first thing to think about with this one is practicing the groove just on the A. Okay, before you try and play the whole thing, just work on the shuffle, work on picking the right strings. A real common thing is that the pick wants to play just the string that the finger is on. So a little bit, you've got to reprogramming your brain there to play the, the one string thicker than the one that your finger's on and the one that your finger's on together. It's just a little push with the finger, making sure that the underneath of that first finger is muting the other strings underneath as well. That's a fairly important part of it. Once you've got that together, have a go at counting and then see if you can count the bars. Instead of counting one, two, three, four each time, you count one, and two, and three, and four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two. To be able to count there, you've got four bars on the A, excuse me, four bars on the A, two bars on the D, two bars on the A, then E, D, A, E, just one bar each. The hardest part is usually the skip from the E chord to the D chord, where first finger has to find its way from the fifth string to the third string in a bit of a jump, and the picking hand has to change the strings that's picking as well. That's the hardest part usually for most people. Now, again, using a little backing track is a really helpful way of doing it. There is a kind of a lower limit here. If you go too slowly, it becomes kind of harder. So you want to find that kind of middle ground, maybe 60, 70 beats per minute, maybe even 80. So you find most people have a tempo that kind of works for them with the shuffle. That's the easiest. I've had students that find it really difficult to do it slow, like 50 or 60, but they're fine at like 80 or 90, which are kind of weird. But um, yeah, find the tempo that you feel is easiest as the place to start off with. You'll probably find that once you can do it, you'll just be playing along and going, oh yeah, about this speed, this is a good speed. <laughs> Let's do it around this speed and see if you can then make your, your way through. Either use a metronome, use a backing track, it doesn't really matter, but you do want something in time because longer term you want to play it with somebody else. And if you stop and start, it really, it's off-putting. If you're jamming with someone, they're playing the lead line, and then you start stopping, it's like, oh God, that's a bit weird. It's one of the reasons why I put so much emphasis on playing along with backing tracks in this course, because it really teaches you the importance of staying in time all, you know, all the time. Um, definitely, if you're ever playing with a band, you can't like have a, a chord change that's a bit hard and just go, oh, stop, hang on, just let me get that chord. Okay, let's go again. You know. 
So, you know, developing that sense of time is really, really important. And this shuffle, there's so many different songs that use this same thing in so many different ways. Um, just to give you a little taste of what's to come. But once you've got this together, you can add a little mute. That sounds pretty cool straight away. You can change it. You can have like... I mean, there are so many fun things here. Uh, different tempos that were, you know, you can have a... Or you can have... really is there's so much cool stuff going on on here for different songs this 12 bar form is used by thousands of songs at different speeds and different keys and different kind of riffs involved with each one so by learning the basic form you're kind of opening up this whole space where there's lots of different fun stuff to explore I'm, I'm sure i hope i can encourage you to get into blues even if you feel like you're more of a pop person or a rock person or a folky dude or whatever it is you know whatever style it is that you think you like if you're not into blues because lots of people are like, oh, into blues as a fun thing as a guitar player blues is hard to beat i think finger style all of that sort of stuff's great fun as well and i love rock stuff and i love i like music i'm in love with all sorts of music but blues has a special place on that the, the fact that it's an improvised form where you can play around with it you don't you're not kind of tied into doing it a set way and yeah, it's just loads of fun. I hope I can inspire you to at least check it out. Do check out the Spotify playlists that I offer as well, because they're, it's just, I want to introduce you to great examples of blues. What I'd hate for you to do is, you know, go on some random playlist and go like, mm, it's not really very good. And actually, I might have thought the same if it wasn't very good blues. You want to be listening to the best stuff you can find. Anyway, enough of my ramblings. I'll see you plenty more very soon. You all take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.